Hi. Welcome to the bathtub. We're going to hear this sound. The sound of a crystal forming in a cavern deep underneath the earth. Um, you know you're in the post-tech, this is the post-tech edition of the bathtub. It's a post-tech decade. As most of you know, we have no pixels, we have no no high tech, we have no 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 uh, technology whatsoever. Um, this this is being filmed on a on a spring loaded eight millimeter camera and transferred to Etch a Sketch, and that's how we're getting it onto YouTube. This is YouTube in the way Grandma used to do it back when Grandma was a babe. I don't think you, many of you many of you guys don't remember this, but your grandmas were all babes, and th and that's when we used to do that's this is this is how they YouTube back then. No no special CGI whiteboard nonsense, just the pure, hundred percent go goodness of master bathing with a master bather. I'm gonna close this window here. There's one thing about the post tech decade is we really do a crappy job almost everything we're doing. Today we're going to talk, I'm trying to do these about under 10 minutes, all the pretty horses. As some of you know, we're trying to read, one of my, one of my self-challenges has been to read through McCarthy's novels before his new novels come out in October and November, and I forget the titles of the new books. It doesn't really matter. Cheers. Post-tech post -tech goodness to all of you. No carb. No carbs. And I've got up to all the pretty horses. I'm really enjoying reading through Cart McCarthy again. It's it's been uh, enjoyable in for many reasons. One of which is how different his books are from one another as he moves along. I mean, each one has a. a I always remembered him most vividly from Blood Meridian. This really kind of fantastic, over the top, violent kind of carnage of the old west. Dodo, Dodo, shh, 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 shh. come here, come down, shush. This violent kind of, and it's kind of over the top, almost hallucinogenic violence of that book. That that's how it always I always thought of McCarthy when I was reading him when I first started reading him back in the back in the eighties, uh, must be early eighties. And I reviewed all three of the all three of the Border trilogy when they came out each year that they came out for I think the Independent when I was working for the Independent years ago in London. And I, I did enjoy this, and I gave it a really good review, and I enjoyed it very much the first time. Um, but I remember being a little disappointed because it was, it was a very different tone from all those, some of those early, really nightmarishly funny books. It's a little more realistic. It's a little more of a coming-of-age novel than most of his other, his other books. And it's more of a little bit more naturalistic, more kind of, you know, you believe you're in this world. It's a little less over the top. But it's still a really good read. Um, and and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to kind of reading reading the whole Border trilogy again, you know, 20, 30 years after they first came out. The the stories about it it's it's basically set in the somewhere early early parts of the century. I don't remember exactly the date. There's there's, there's cars and stuff. It's, it feels like the 30s or the 40s now, maybe 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 later. And it's about a guy who lives on a young kid named John Grady Cole. He's 16 or 17. And his, he's obviously having some problems with his family, but one of the things you get from this guy is he's kind of the last of the real, quote, true cowboys. He really knows a lot about horses. His grandfather knew a lot about horses. His dad did. His parents are getting divorced. His mother's, his mother's gone into acting or something. She's obviously completely uh, d disgusted by living on a, a farm. And she's selling the farm, and the father's dying, and the grandfather's just died. And you just kind of get all this in the background at the opening. But basically, John Grady decides he's going to go south. He's going to go to Mexico just to get out, get away as far as he can from his whole family and what's been happening to his life. But he feels really part of the world. He really part. Of, he has a kind of physical connection, particularly to horses. Something I have no, I can't even identify. But when he writes, when McCarthy writes about horses and this kid's relationship with the horses, he does it very well. So he goes down south with his his buddy. I forget his buddy's name now, but. Um, we, um, him and his friend about the same age and when they go down south they meet this really weird character named I believe Jimmy Blevins when you read the book he's only in the book a very small amount of time but you kind of can't forget this character and he's a 13 year old kid who's probably a criminal who's probably driving around on a stolen horse and probably has a stolen gun on him that's about all his kid owns and he's just a really weird character he's very funny and very strange um, at one point it starts to there's a storm coming out on the plains or in Mexico somewhere in the plains of Mexico 
and a storm car starts coming, and it turns out this kid Blevins is terif- is certain that he's going to get hit by lightning because his whole family's been hit by lightning. I'm just going to read this little passage just for some of the humor of the book, which comes and goes throughout it. Um, you afraid of lightning, said John Grady. I'll be struck sure as the world. The kid is just sitting terrified hearing this the, the storm coming. Rollins nodded at the canteen hung by its strap from the pommel of John Grady's saddle. Don't give him no more of that shit. He's coming down with the DTs. They've been drinking alcohol because they're out of water. It runs in the family, says Blevins. My granddaddy was killed in a mine bucket in West Virginia. It run down in the hole 180 feet to get him. It couldn't even wait for him to get to the top. The lightning went down at the mining hole to kill his his grandfather. They had to wet down the bucket to cool it for they could get him out of it, him and two other men. It fried him like bacon. My daddy's older brother was blowed out of a derrick in the Batson field in the year 1904. Cable rig with a wood derrick, but the lightning got him anyways, and got him not 19 year old. Great uncle on my mother's side, mother's side, I said, got killed on a horse and it never singed a hair on that horse, and it killed him graveyard dead. They had to cut his belt off him where it welded the buckle shut, and I got a cousin, ain't but four years older than me, was struck down in his own yard coming from the barn, and it paralyzed him all down one side and melted the fillings in his teeth and soldered his jaw shut. I told you, said Rollins. He's gone completely dipshit. They didn't know what was wrong with him. He just twitched and mumbled and pointed his mouth like. That's an out-and-out lie, or I never heard one, said Rollins. Blevins didn't hear. Beads of sweat stood on his forehead. Another cousin on my daddy's side, it got him. It set his hair on fire. The change in his pocket burned through and fell out on the ground and set the grass alight. I didn't, I been done struck twice. How come me to be deaf in this one ear? I'm double-bred for death by fire. You got to get away from anything metal at all. You don't know what'll get you. Brads in your overalls, nails in your boots. I won't read it anymore. It's a hilarious scene. But the kid goes crazy, and his horse is terrified of, of, of thunder and lightning. And they go, they go running off. Turn this. And... Uh, it's in as a result of this this thunderstorm the kid they, the kid goes off he loses all his clothes and it becomes the kind of the downfall of these two uh, of these these characters for various reasons um they i won't describe more of the plot they go down south they lose this kid um he gets his he loses his horse and the horse gets stolen the kid wants to get it back and that becomes the um kind of the the fall for these these three who were pretty happy up until then, but the notion that this this kid is going to try to get his stolen horse back from someone else who stole it from him, uh, it kind of the plot kind of hinges around that. The kids go off and get involved in this kind of wealthy old family, an old Mexican family, who have had this kind of ranchero for for decades and for generations, and they start working on the farm. And there's some amazing descriptions I wouldn't I would not normally be interested in describing how they actually start to. Uh, train these horses what they bring in out of these wild these wild horses and the affection these these two young men Rollins is the other one and John Grady what they have for these these horses um, as a result of it they, there's a prison scene which is kind of horrific there's a couple knife fights that are described the story is very realistic basically all the way through and it sort of makes connections with this old family these old wealthy families and then these old relations to maybe radical radical uh, politics in the in the in the turn of the century and the family's connections to that and they talk a lot about the difference between the Mexican Mexican families and American and, and northern families and Texas families and it's all really interesting all really enjoyable it turns into a bit of a cowboy adventure and in the last 40 or 50 pages are interesting there's a kind of a revenge story that takes place in the last 30 or 40 pages there's a very good love story between John Grady and this young girl the wealthy family's youngest daughter and his relationship to her it's all very good uh, until and in the end i like but it was a little a little too much of a movie it felt like at the end but up until that last last 40 pages i actually thought it was one of my favorite mccarthy books and it's still a really really wonderful piece of writing so um i'm again i'm glad we're i'm glad i'm reading through these again i don't want to say any more than that i don't want to, but it, it's i have to say it's a good place to start it's it's less horrific. It's less violent. It's a little. It's almost a, 
a pleasant novel. It's almost not an unpleasant ending like most of his books are. There's there's something about John Grady who seems to come through this um, a fairly happy, sensible person at the end in, in a world which is which is for McCarthy always awful, pretty much always awful. Um, anyway, he ha and he has his horse at the end, so I think that's good. Okay, stay safe. Uh, happy bathing. We're gonna we're gonna try to get through these. I don't know if we're gonna make our our goal, but we will try to read through all of McCarthy before we get to the new novels in the next month or two. Okay, bye.